Well, good morning, everyone. I am here this morning and the afternoon for, with Colleen Raygrath Smith, who is the co author with Joe Parfit of Career in Your Suitcase, the fourth edition. And I am Heidi Walker, and I am the co author with Megan Peterson Fenn of Inspiring Global Entrepreneurs. And we wanted to interview Colleen today because career in the career in your suitcase book is really not just for expats or global nomads or people who are relocating their lives. It is for anyone who is looking to make a career transition, regardless of the stage in your career that you're currently at, regardless of the stage in your life that you're currently at. And that message comes loud and through, through my reading of the book, as well as from various reviewers. And we really wanted to make sure that we got that message out there to more people. So we've asked Colleen to speak with us today, and she has very kindly offered to share the six secrets of a portable career with us for everyone who's out there wondering, how do you find that passion at times when maybe it's not coming right away to you? So Colleen, thank you so much for joining us. And I would love to just really start with you just introducing yourself and tell us about how did you find yourself there in the Netherlands um, from Canada and really guiding people all over the world on making these transitions? Well, thanks so much, Heidi. It's a, it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to talk to you today and share the six secrets. Um, but first, a little bit about myself. I've been in the Netherlands now for eight years. And when I first moved here, I moved um, for love. I fell in love with a Dutchman. And after having had a, a career in, the, in Canada in career development as a self-employed person, I decided to take the leap and take my career on an international adventure. Wow. And so I found myself here. Um, and needed to learn the language because I didn't think oh, I'll be moving again right away and marrying a Dutch person. I thought I, I definitely need to learn the language. And it's something I expect of people when they move to Canada, that they'll learn the language there. So I expected it of myself too. Mm -hmm. So I did that first. And, and then I, I practiced everything that I've been teaching people these last years in Canada. And I, I put it to the ultimate test, I say. And, and found that they do work and they are effective in international transitions as well. And so that's what I love to teach people about being able to take their careers and, and, and move with them, not necessarily internationally, although that's, that's one of the key things. But it could also be to saying, I want to live in a rural setting, mm -hmm. not in a city. Mm -hmm. So choosing your location can be a reason to move. Well, you could also be in a state where your career isn't really going anywhere or you're not sure what the next step is and then you also want to take your career on an adventure and and find that next step so there's different kinds of adventures that we all take in our careers well definitely and i just think reading your story and reading how you spent the two years learning dutch and going out there and and you know giving your services for free to start with and then eventually getting the paid contract and doing it all in a second language if there is anything else that inspires, you know, someone who is only needing to make a change in their own state, then it's got to be that. Because I just feel you read that and say, what am I worried about going to this networking event tonight? I'm doing it in English. And, you know, so I found that that was really, you know, you really put, like you say, you put the lessons that you'd been teaching and working with other people to use in, <laughs> in more ways than one. So if, if you can do that, then any of us should be able to really make these transitions um, because there's no bigger transition than having to work in a, in a language that is not your, your mother tongue. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the culture is also something to take into account. And luckily, the Netherlands isn't so far off from Canadian culture. Mm -hmm. So that's another factor to take into account. But there was still a lot of nuances and little details to learn that are important. Yes. So those things are also important to factor in as well. Definitely, without a yeah. doubt. Well, I think that in this day and age, and I have a number of family members as well as friends right now who are 
at a stage in their career or in between careers and wondering what is that next step and i we have given i've given them copies of my book to say hey guys take a look at inspiring global entrepreneurs read these stories and see if this inspires you and gives you some ideas and then when we we got connected and we i said let's also do the same in talking about career in your suitcase because it is just so relevant for all of those people. And I think in this day and age with the economy, the way that it is, the American economy, especially, but the European economy and anywhere else to really empower people to know that they can make those changes and to hear from other people who have done it is just so valuable. So in terms of the six secrets of a portable career, what would you share with people who are at that stage right now, not sure where the next, the next move is and wondering if they're going to find something fulfilling again? Well, the first step for me <clears throat> that I would encourage people to do, and this is really a process. The first step is to reflect and, and evaluate what have I done? Where have I found those pockets of real meaningful activity and where I felt like I made a really good contribution, where I was using my skills at a really a level where I felt really good about um, allowed me to grow but didn't I wasn't bored and all of those kinds of factors coming together but it's also to look at at what are my life roles at this stage have I become a parent or am I now a part have a partner um, a life partner or what, what are those what are those life roles are you looking after aging parents what are the demands on you in terms of all the different life roles that you're juggling so taking a look at that too as well as your your values, um, mm -hmm. what's important to you, and what's interesting you your interests grow and change too. There's often a common thread, but what is it of interest to you? What's capturing your your um, imagination? What are the things that you read? What are the headlines you actually follow up on, or the the little things on Facebook that you click through to read the full article on? What are those things? Find find those things, document them, make a list, see what they are. And take that time to really reflect and reevaluate where where am I at in life, where do I where would I love to go, but also who am I, and what am I doing in my life right now, and then you have a good idea about where you're starting from, and then you can it can help you to identify what you can be, and I love this word wholehearted about doing, mm -hmm. and instead of saying the word passionate about doing, what can you put your whole self into? What can you really feel engaged with? And that would be meaningful to you at this point in your life. Because we all know there'll be more changes and more opportunities to reevaluate and make another choice. But at this point, what would you really like to do next? I think it's such a wonderful point. And I think one of the reasons why perhaps people who have moved internationally find themselves in an expat situation find themselves almost naturally in this reflective setting and it, you know and that it comes more naturally with that large transition than possibly it does when maybe only the job has changed or you find yourself out of a job um, but still in your same everyday situation and as someone who's a life coach myself and you yourself been working with you know people through career transitions we both know and understand how powerful that reflection time is and how essential it is to really do it. But what I find is that people are not always as willing to do it or maybe don't know how to go about doing it, which is why, you know, in your book and in ours, we also have those prompts, those coaching prompts. So if you can't afford possibly to go out there and hire yourself, hire a coach for a session or two, then you can use the Career in Your Suitcase workbook and you can use the Inspiring Global Entrepreneurs book and worksheets to really do that reflection for yourself because I agree that that is an essential step that a lot of people miss out on. Maybe they're scared to do it, I'm not sure, but I, in my experience, it is nothing will change without that. Yeah, I think there's a bit of a panic reaction mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. when there's a gap or a hole. I think I must fill it. I must do something. But to see this reflection as a really important part of of preparing yourself for the next step is important. And I love the metaphor that um, a Canadian career development guru <laughs> uses. He calls it the backswing. And you have to take that swing backwards in order to be to gain momentum and to be able to hit the ball, whether you're playing tennis or golf or some other sport that's similar. 
And to be able to send it in the direction where you want to go, you need to be focusing forward, looking to where you want to send it to, but you have to take that backswing first. So reflect, find that focal point where you want to go next. Take the time to swing backwards, reevaluate and, and understand who you are at this point in your life. And then make your, and then you'll start your swing from a much more powerful place and it'll carry you over a lot of the hurdles Mm -hmm. and the challenges that you will face as you move forward towards that next step. I think that that is such a fantastic point. You know, I loved reading and reading your story and saying that, you know, you'd given your services for free to, to kind of get that momentum going. And I'm in that place right now with the parenting classes that I'm offering here. And, you know, I have a couple people paying, but I'm also offering it to free to get the word of mouth out. And you can get a little bit discouraged, but then you say, no, I'm one of the, one of the women in our book, you know, she said, do whatever you can to be connecting with that work that allows you to live your passion. Or as you say, you know, that allows you to know that you're living wholeheartedly or authentically and stay connected to it. And I love that phrase, the backswing. It is so important. And often people I think are thinking, oh, it's not going to be worth it if I'm going back and starting again, but you never know where it's going to lead to. You never know what opportunity will arise by that connection that you make or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Another part of that whole reflecting thing, and this is actually the second secret, is learning. Mm-hmm. Being open to new learning is essential. You, you, We don't know it all, and new experiences always teach us new things. So being open to experiencing those things and learning all you can from them not only in terms of personal growth, but also professional growth, can really, really help. And for me, I I needed to learn a whole new labor market, which has different rules here, uses a whole different kind of CV as opposed to a resume, which was a a hard thing to let go of. This is a resume and this is a good resume to say, okay, so this could be a good way of doing it too. And (laughs) find my, my, my way of doing a good CV here. Those kinds of things were all important to being open to and learning. And it wouldn't have worked to come in and say, you guys are doing it all wrong. I know the way. This is the way. That's, the, you know, that's too um, culturally based in where I came from. So I had to open myself up to being a learner. Another area I had to do that in was with my Dutch driver's license. Oh. <laughs> After 20 years of driving. Oh, my gosh. Being Uh-oh. tested again and opening yourself up to possibly failing. I was the most nervous I've ever been for a test. And I had to do the theory, too. And it was um, it was a real challenge, even though I was able to arrange to do it in English because I didn't touch, trust my Dutch enough at that point. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. But I <laughs> well, I think it is such a great point, especially after we've been in a career for a while that we become very good at. And, you know, I remember after I finished being a human resources director, going and sitting in um, the, I took a neuro linguistic programming certification course. And I remember just sitting there and being like, oh my gosh, it feels so wonderful to learn again. And although I'd been learning and doing different things, you know, just really sitting and taking in something completely new. I literally just felt like a sponge. I really didn't. I realized it had been something that had been missing for me for a while. So yeah. it was, you go out there and you're a little bit nervous about it, but no opening yourself up to that. You realize it's probably something you have been missing and, and enjoy doing again. Yeah. So it's, it's important that no matter where you're at, really yes, yeah, to yeah. identify something that you can learn and that, that will help you grow and continue to, to develop instead of just kind of going through the, the rote things every day. So even if you're not in career transition, just opening yourself up to learning and, and setting a learning goal makes it sound really businessy. But just saying, what's, what's interesting to me right now? What do I wish I knew? Yeah. And going out there and finding it. And it could be as simple as just doing a, a really targeted search mm-hmm. and following up a whole bunch of different links on Google. It doesn't have to be a formal thing. But just, yeah, identify what you want to learn, what you don't know yet, mm-hmm. and, and then set about finding ways to learn it. Wonderful. Yeah. And so reflecting is very important and con- being willing to and continuing to learn, whether you're still in that job and thinking about the next transition or if you are in that transition phase already. And yeah. what, what is number three, Joe? What, uh, Colleen, what is the number three? I'm sorry, I keep on, for some reason, I don't know why I have Joe Parfit on my mind. Maybe it's with Linda's book as well, so I apologize. It um, could be. She's everywhere. Yeah, 
<laughs> I think so. Um, so the number three secret, the third secret. Number three is connect. And actually, this is one of Joe's biggest things, too. So it's not surprising she pops up in your head. <laughs> yeah. She has so many great examples in the book. And they are true. You have to connect where you are. You want to keep your global network going. You want to keep your network going from where you've been. And for me, moving to the Netherlands, a couple of people were able to provide some real key inroads through their, from their network, links for me into a new network here in the Netherlands. They gave me names of people I could connect with here. Fabulous people that get, yeah, provided me with a, a starting point to build my network. But I also joined the professional association and I tried to get involved. I volunteered all things that get you out meeting people and, and building your network where you are. And it doesn't have to be, um, yeah, officially joining something. You can just be listening when you're standing in line at the supermarket. It's also a good way to listen to how people speak the language if yes. it's a different, <laughs> uh, and how they make chit chat because that's one of the hardest things I think in a new language. But yeah, just just hearing what what are the things that are concerning people, what's of interest to them, what are the hot topics, and then seeing how you could maybe match your skills to some of the things that people are talking about. Um, yeah. Connecting is so, so essential and, and you can get, spend all your time behind your computer feeling like you're connecting, but yeah. you really do need to get outside your door and go for a walk and just say hello to people along the way. And you never know, you might come across somebody who stands and chat, chats for a little while and it could be a really good connection. So, and, and it's more about sharing information not being even though you feel like you're in a place of, of need and you need to build your network yes and and you want to find opportunities but more saying this is who i am this is what's important to me this is what i know and what i have to share and when you go out and connect in the world from that place of strength then you share from those places and then people are more interested in you and and what you're looking for as well but if you just immediately jump on somebody and say i'm looking for this and you haven't already shared something, you haven't already formed a good connecting point, then it's a little harder to, to get the things coming back to you. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, it's a sharing, it's a giving from a place of abundance rather than, than saying, oh, I'm a needy person, I need opportunity, I need something, and, and approaching people from that needy place. People tend to put up barriers for that. And that's not networking, it's not just handing out business cards, it's forming meaningful connections and sharing. Exactly. We, Megan and I talk about this a lot. It's really about the reciprocity, you know, and it is about, I said, you know, I think one of the, one of the questions I asked in our book was, you know, if you can't think of three times when you have connected someone else to someone else that will help them, then you need to start doing that because otherwise it's only one-sided. And there's yeah. a lot of one-sided networking out there and people can see it and smell it a mile away. So it's really important. And to just be doing that very freely is yeah. being a generous networker. <laughs> and that's why networking has gotten a bit of a bad rap. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So reflecting, learning, connecting, um, the, the, the top three secrets of a portable career. And yeah. what about number four? Number four is, and this is a tough one, believe in yourself. <clears throat> when you're going through a transition and you leave your job or you leave your, your comfortable environment, pieces of your identity tend to be left behind too. Those, some of those things, those touchstones that helped you define who you were and helped you to answer that question. So yeah, who are you and what do you do? You don't have some of those pieces anymore. And in the absence of those, you can start to, to lose some self-confidence and you can waver in, in believing, yeah, this is possible for me here. I can continue to do this or I am up for this new opportunity. And so it was really important for me to find you know, key supports who would help me stay connected to that. Um, it was also a really great tool that I really like to emphasize and, and this word is a bit misleading, but it's, it, I call it a portfolio. Mm -hmm. And there's many different kinds of portfolios out there. But really, all it is is a binder or a book that I've put all kinds of stuff in. So education stuff, so certificates, diplomas, memberships of things. 
but also um, newspaper clippings where I was quoted, um, a copy of my first Dutch um, workshop booklet in mm, Dutch, yes. which looks really simple now. <laughs> but that was such a big thing. And I also have a picture of my Dutch driver's license with the story that goes with it. And so putting those stories down, writing down the stories, sometimes people write blogs and that's, that's also a form of this. And printing off some of those stories with a picture and putting them in your portfolio, someplace where you can go back and look through them. Because it was when I did that, that I found the strength to say, I'm going to make another phone call. I'm going to make another effort. I'm going to try a little bit longer. Um, and not that there's anything wrong with working in retail. I thought I was going to have to work in retail to, to practice my Dutch. Yes, yeah. And I was trying to revise my CV to fill out the application form. And it was like carving out pieces of myself, you know, that were no longer relevant for that position. And, it was so <laughs> and so I was flipping through my, my portfolio and I thought, I love this. I have loved doing this. It's so meaningful to me. I want to continue to help people make meaningful choices in their careers. This is what I want to do. And when I reaffirmed that statement and reaffirmed, I, if I can do it there, I can do it here too, then, then that really helps. So yeah, finding a touchstone, some concrete things that you can look to that say, yes, you can, are really important. And it's another fabulous way of really doing that evaluation for yourself too and saying, you know, well, which aspects of these did I love or, or have I lost touch with say my photography or my writing? And, you know, in other words, really helping you putting that portfolio together can be that really way of assessing where you want to go next and remembering pieces of yourself that you've forgotten. Yeah. The portfolio is really a tool for everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it prepares exactly. You for the interviews, it prepares you for that reflection part and in, in terms of who am I, what have I accomplished so far and which ones of those do I want to carry forward or build some more or grow. It prepares you for all those. And it's sort of a master CV or resume as yes, well. Yeah, exactly. All of your stuff is there and then you just pick out the most relevant parts that will make you uh, the candidate for whatever position you're looking at or whatever opportunity you want to to uh, to get. Oh, go after. And I think it's such a great point too, and I love that in your book as well as in Inspiring Global Entrepreneurs, we both really share the reality that there are those moments where you don't believe in yourself, that there are those moments when you're down. And that was so important to Megan and I because I think it can be very lonely when you're out there in a transition looking for something new or starting up your own business, whatever that transition might be, and see other people who are successful and wonder, is it ever going to happen for me, knowing that others have had those moments where they're not sure and they've worked through it and hearing you say, make that another, just make one more phone call, just go for it again. It's so important that for people to know that they're not alone in in feeling that maybe they don't believe in their self today, but guess what? Make this call and you will, or do the portfolio and you'll feel better. It's just so important. Yeah, absolutely. And and yeah, to you know that to normalize it, and to just know to keep taking steps and you'll get through it. You'll find your way through it, and and it's part of the process. Yes. And it helps you to to come out on the other side a bit stronger. Um, having learned some good lessons along yeah. the way. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So reflection, learning, connecting, and believing in yourself. And really, I love this idea of putting the portfolio together and keeping that together, even if you're not thinking of transition right now, but to be collecting those, those career achievements or life achievements that you can do you know, that way you're not starting from scratch. Yeah. And, and even oh, just inventorying your hobbies yes, yes. So that you can see the skills that you're using in your hobbies and, and how they could transfer into a workplace environment or, or some kind of other opportunity. So, so important. And it's never done. You're always adding to it. Exactly. Um, and just having that place when those new things come along, you say, oh, I know where to put this in my portfolio. Otherwise, they can get lost. You know, they think, why would I keep that? And you toss it. Instead of just filing it away and adding it to the stack, it could be a box, your portfolio. Yeah. It doesn't have to be all organized, whatever. Just um, a place that you can you can store all those relevant artifacts, I like to call them. From oh, the I, 
I'm laughing because I've got an article that I wrote for my the the local paper, the mom to mom blog that I blog for, and every now and then one of them makes it into the paper, and I've got it on my refrigerator right now. So I'm like, okay, Heidi, must put that in a portfolio. You know? Definitely, definitely, yeah. <laughs> Because when it's time on the fridge, is gone. Where does it go? Exactly. Someone's going to clear it out. Spring cleaning, right? So exactly. wonderful. I love, I love that. It's yellowed at the edges. Exactly. I love it. Fantastic. So number five then, Colleen. Number five. And this is an interesting one because I, I always wonder how, how it will come across to some people. It's visualize. Mm -hmm. And it's really creating a picture in your head of what it is you want, where you want to go. And it doesn't have to have all of the details filled in, but it has enough elements, sort of little factors that you're, you're wanting to have in that picture that you can, you can recognize it when you do come across it. So it doesn't necessarily have an occupational title associated with it or all the details, but it's, for me it was, I wanna ride my bike to work like a local Dutch person. I don't wanna be stuck in traffic jams. Love that. Um, and then there was a, a gap in terms of my experience from Canada where I'd given workshops that were all short. And I said, I wanted to do something a little more longer um, that lasted a little bit longer. So when the opportunity to do something that lasted three months, people were there for actually three to six months, I thought this is perfect. I wouldn't have known what to call it or exactly how to describe it. But when it came up, I said, yeah, this will give me that missing piece. This will add to my experience and help me to grow and develop further above the fact that it's actually a training, giving training in Dutch, which is <laughs> um, but so creating that mental image. And another part um, of uh, a visualization I did in, in Canada was just seeing uh, the most dominant feature was natural light. Mm. And so I recognize that I need to work in a place with natural light. And here in the Netherlands, they have really big windows which really makes a big difference. Yes. And there's a law that every workplace has to have a certain amount of natural light. Wow, I love that. Isn't that a great law? Yes. And they recognize, obviously, living in a country that's fairly clouded and often rainy, yes. that people need natural light. So this is a really good environment for me in that sense that I, I get to have natural light. Um, and that's part of my visualization. So I'm trying to say all this to make it sound less kind of, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, magic and stuff like that. But we, the studies of the brains have been show of our brain, not, we only have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the study of the brain has been showing us how important it is to have these images, to, to imagine things. And, and a career crisis is really a crisis of imagination. So you have to be able to create these pictures of different scenarios. You could call it scenarios to take a little bit of the yes. airiness away. But to have these images that you create for yourself and can fill in the blanks, and it's great if you can make it sensual so you can even smell it or see it or, or feel it. Just all engage all your senses so that when it does show up on your doorstep that you can recognize it and say, oh, I didn't imagine it would be this one, but there it is. Yes, yes. Well, I love it. Being a coach and working with people and always saying, you know, different things. I love that you bring in that about the senses, you know, so how will it feel when you are doing the work that you are wholeheartedly engaged in? What will you see around you? What will you taste around you? What might it be? Whatever, depending on their sensory preferences, is a fantastic way to do it. And like you say, how amazing to have a, um, what an amazing, almost serendipity to go to a country where natural light is, is, is given that, um, that importance and to know I'm in the right place. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like these things are all fitting. The pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Had you not been able to even just to think about visualizing the type of environment you want to be working in, it wouldn't have even had that importance. Whereas it's like, oh, wonderful. Yes, this is, I'm, I'm finding a new home here. I'm finding something that fits me. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> England, yeah. ne England needs that law. <laughs> And there's a lot that we can learn from. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Different European yeah. countries, right? So fabulous. Mm -hmm. And I know that in Career in Your Suitcase, I know that in this, the workbook as well, you guys have got so many great ways that people can do that and to start to put that visualization or the scenario together. And I yeah. as fully agree. And if someone goes to see a coach, then they're going to work with them on that as well. So, hey, guys, you can get the book and you can actually do it yourself, you know? Yeah, um, yeah is, exactly. So important. All these things are, are written up in detail. Exactly. With, with um, exercises 
and create examples I to agree. inspire and to, to show how it can work. Exactly. Yeah. No, they really are, which is wonderful. And okay, fantastic. So number six then. Number six, really, yeah. When you see that opportunity or something comes across your path, the key is to respond with yes and. And so it's oftentimes we say, well, no, or we say, well, yes, but. And it's really a yes and. And it's a skill I learned in improvisational theater. It's uh -huh. one of the basic principles of improvisational theater. And let's face it, today's life is very improvised. It's not all set out. It's not all pre-planned. We don't know how the script is going to run. So you have to be able to improvise. And being able to say yes and keeps the energy, the momentum going on stage and also in your life. So if I you don't want to keep hitting dead ends and, and roadblocks, try saying yes and. And it allows you to say yes. And when you add the and, you can you can sort of shift it a little bit in the direction that you're interested or you can you can see how you could use that or, or build from that to use it as a stepping stone or or keep you going in the direction that you you see yourself going in so instead of kind of going well no that's not exactly what i wanted or i have it very specifically this say yes and because i have to say <clears throat> after 6 months when I looked back after I finally got my first paid contract, I say finally, <laughs> I was really like six months after doing the language learning. And yes. start, when I started to look for opportunities, it was really six months where I didn't know how all those steps were going to connect. And, but by saying yes and to them and just sort of building on whatever opportunities they presented to me, all of a sudden within six months, I looked back and I said, oh, that led to that and that led to that and that led to that. And that's that wonderful, again, another metaphor and how, how many of us have done those connect the dots, coloring things. Yes, yes. When we were kids. And Steve Jobs used that as a wonderful metaphor in his Stanford University commencement address saying, you know, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking back. So say yes and move forward and trust that the dots will connect. Yeah. And they will. If you're, if you're following your your values and your interests and what's important to you and using your skills, there will be a common thread and they will connect and you'll find your way forward. Not in a straight line, but a nice waving, interesting, meandering, um, but forward moving line. And it'll make your life so, so rich. So yes. And is one of the key skills, I think, and one of the, the six secrets, the best six, <laughs> the best, the best of <laughs> the, the six it makes them all come to life. Um, <laughs> I love it. And I also love what you're saying there about that it's not a straight line. And in the almost 30 stories of entrepreneurs that we interviewed and gathered for our book, not one was a straight line. And it's, I think that in a sense, maybe even our generation, what we were told in school, maybe based on the previous generation, is that it is a straight line and that it's not. And we need to be okay with that. And so normalizing that and knowing that it's about telling the story and about seeing where those connections are. I think people do get scared if it doesn't go exactly perfectly. How will I tell this story? Because it's not the straight projectile, you know, the straight projection line I was expecting. So I love that you've made that point because I think it's so important. Okay, thanks so much. Well, Colleen, thank you so much. And just to recap for everybody, the six secrets to a portable career, regardless of where you are in, your, in the world or in your life right now, reflect, learn, connect, believe in yourself, visualize where you want to be, how it will feel, what it will look like, and respond with yes and and all of those dots will come together. You will find yourself living that wholehearted, authentic life that you've dreamed of and seen other people doing and wondering how they got there. Well, this is how. Pick up a copy of The Career in Your Suitcase, the fourth edition by Joe Parfit and Colleen Raygrass-Smith. And Colleen, I just thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. And I know that so many people will be helped by this who are having maybe one of their not so better days, they will be feeling better after they watch this. So thank you so much for sharing with us. My pleasure. Thanks so much, Heidi. You're an inspiration and loving your book and all of what's in it too. Thank so, you. Thank thanks you. for the opportunity. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much.